the aims that we all wanted to go was to reinvent the physical motion of Spider-Man. We wanted to go very retro with it, sort of old school and see real people doing stuff. We tried to do the effects as practically as possible. We wanted to create a physical reality to this that made it feel more realistic. Mark has a take on it where one of the things that was really important for him is to make things as realistic as possible. And so what we've tried to do from the very beginning is do as much as we can in camera before you go into the visual effects part of it. So the more that we could do with Andrew Garfield, our, our young Spider-Man, and the other actors and get on camera, we thought that that would make a better movie and a more believable movie, that the movements would be more natural and things like that. If you can do it simply and practically with people, that's where we'd like to land if we can, and we'll push that as far as we can. And we get, if we get to the point where we realize we can't go any further with it, then we throw it into the world of visual effects. Very impressed that Mark wanted to approach it from a more realistic point of view. At the same time, we're 2011 shooting it, 2012 it's going to come out. You've got to move with the times, and I think there's a great need for the integration of real action and computer generated action. And I always look at the computer generated side of it as a, you'll get out of jail free card if you like. It's a wonderful tool that you can use when there's certain things that are impossible to do without safety attachments and wires. Okay, Jack, climb now! I can! You can, you can! And drop! Ugh. So there's a very, very close integration, and we talk about, well, we can have him swing off here, but he can't really slam into that pillar, not from that distance. We're actually dealing with human beings here, and our whole point is trying to get a human being into it. And that's when you pull your get out of jail free card and say, when he jumps off up a ground and starts swinging underneath, can you make the drop down there? Because there's railings and things, we can't physically do it at this location. As long as they know up front and they plan for it and they get the software sorted out, they can do that sort of thing. So there's, there's a huge integration between us all in those sort of areas. There's a component of the stunt work where they've really worked hard on taking a, a man, suspending him from the right geometry of wires and allowed him to swing doing these arcs and, and creating these moments where they defy gravity and doing it for real. And that to us was the, the best reference we could have. And we really mimicked that and just looked at what gravity did to the real stuntman and then enhanced it to just a bigger scope. I mean, the scene that um, where Spider-Man swings under the bridge and is chased by the police is a great example of you know, practical stunt work and then integrating that with CG for wider shots or shots where you know, the mechanics of the, the truss work couldn't extend far enough. So we had great, great reference in real movement and that was something that was really important to Mark. Our philosophy in terms of creating the character animation in particular is based on really revolutionary performance capture elements that's been, that, that have happened in the last uh, few years. And so we're spending a lot of time creating a physical reality to the lizard in a way that couldn't have been done even a few years ago. You know, we spent a lot of time in the motion capture stage creating realistic movement. The big part of that, I think, is performance capture and getting a legitimate performance from the actor and ascribing it to the character, both physically and in terms of his body movement, but also in terms of how his face moves and, and how he looks and what his brow does and how that communicates a certain emotion. So that's a really important thing that we're trying to do. That stays there. This this moves over a little bit. Okay, and take him up to his full-on hand up, hand up position. This is a pretty complex shot because not only do we have to sort of replace the entire city of New York in the background in 3D stereo, 
but we also have to stick Andrew's face on because we're shooting this all up 18 feet up in the air and it would be sort of a risky proposition to get anybody other than a stunt guy doing the actual fall. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot the fall with the stunt person and then in a few days from now we'll, we'll get a motion control system and do the exact same move on Andrew's head. I thought about the nature of Spider-Man and how important it was for us to reinvent the language of Spider-Man. The visceral quality of being in a space and flying through the air as you get a sense of motion and velocity. Everybody's main aim is to make it look as though you're watching a real physical guy doing this physical action. You know, you can't have webs and you can't swing from crane to crane, but we damn well want the audience to walk out of there thinking, wow, how the heck did they do that?